Hello and welcome back to another episode of IBJJF q and I'm your host, John Medina, and joining me today is three-time world champion and Brasileiro champion, Vitor Shalin Hibero. Professor, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, John. Thank you. Thank you for having me, man. Awesome. Great. Well, uh, let's get right into it then. So sure. uh, I wanted to start off this interview by giving a little rundown of your career and accomplishments. Um, for those that don't know, you're one of the top guys in um, the lightweight and middleweight divisions of your generation. You know, you have three world titles and an amazing MMA correct. Uh, MMA record of 20 and five. What's really cool about this statistic is that you had your three world titles consecutively. So it shows this dominance in a certain era in 99, 2000, and 2001. Yes. So you had two at lightweight and one at middleweight. Um, yes. You know, and at this time, it was crazy because there were some serious contenders in that division you fought. You know, you fought Marcel Fetosa, Leo Vieira, Megaton. Alessandro Soka, Bruno Fernandez, Terere, and Daniel Marais, just to name a few. Can you, um, you know, take us back to this time in your career and uh, tell us what these world titles even meant to you at the time, but also what kind of training were you going through to reach such high accomplishments against the complete shark tank of contenders? Yeah, you know, I think it, I think it back then, I think it was a generation where a lot of things start getting developed. We didn't know so much about training, didn't know so much about overtraining, about you know how many hours we should be training, how we should cross training between judo and wrestling and weights. Uh, I think we the only thing we know back then a lot was, you know, if you spend more time on the mat, if you go over you know situations and then specific training and different partners and then have a chance to experience more you know, good and bad things, I believe you're going to have a chance to get better than other people. But I think one big difference for me back then, I think because I was always the youngest guy in the in my division, or maybe I start, when I compete as a black belt, you know, I, I catch up people from a different generation. I'm, I'm 42 now, you know, no probably the guys like you said there, you know, Soka and Petosa and, and Leo is it's a little bit older than me. It's like a 45, maybe some people even 46. So I remember I was running behind strength wise, you know, and even experience wise, because those guys, they have much more mad time than me. And I knew I have to do something to try to try to, you know, to try to try meet that, to try making sure I can I can I can do well against them. And that's when I start, you know, really go into the physical preparation in a very, very hard way. Uh, I think when I was black belt, I think when the last, same time I met Paulo Caruso and Marcio Pimentel, and definitely those two guys make a huge difference in my game. But even before that, I was always into make bleachers, you know, you know, do heels. And I'm always believed that thinking to train you know, they, you know, they, you know, always in the room. We have always one or two guys that can stay for longer time on the mat. They can get early. They put in a little, you know, a little, a, a little stretch earlier than everybody. And people start arriving. And then you do what everybody does, and then you stay a little bit after. I always believe like that little extra thing has always gave me, you know, a little bit extra confidence because back then I didn't have so many professional people in my school. And in some point, Novion came together, and then we start having more a group of guys. But in the beginning, it was I was like a very, you know, very drive to to be professional, to to try to do the things the right way. And I believe like uh, do more than everybody in the, in the room. Uh, you know, listen a lot, my coach, and then kind of like the there back in the days for me, always as always a person like uh, if he's saying to me, you know, that's the way you're gonna do. I don't. I don't go to a second guy or a third guy, or I don't looking for some other way out. If you're telling me that's the way to do it, that's the way you're going to be doing. And I think it always work well because the way he's saying things, at least in my game, in my life, always works so well. That confidence he dropped around right me, you know, making me so strong in a very young age. I, like I was 17 when I got my black belt in 96. And then I totally like a, 
feel almost not not unprepared, but I feel like uh, not mature enough. Not not mature. You know, I, I wasn't a, I wasn't like a a, 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 a man yet. Like right? 22, 23, I was I was still a teenager. You know, 17. And then, but I I, I remember when I asked him about the belt, and he say he say I know what I'm doing. And I think like when he dropped this on my on my shoulders, you know, I knew I can I can let him down after that. I knew I have to put even more time. And then, you know, and then I start, you know, meeting with the right people, start exchanging with wrestling judo, and start we start spending more time with the judo people, like a Flavio Canto, Leo Leite, guys I didn't know before, and at some point became, you know, really huge friends of of, of mine. But I think it was I think things came in very natural for me because I, I feel like uh, I feel like uh, the day and the whole group we got there back then was a very strong group. Like uh, was a very a lot of friends, a lot of people I met there. I'm still talk. I'm still having his number. I'm still calling. So I think that's like uh, the way that they hugged me when I was 14, and the way that they like uh, you know lead me, you know all the way to my black belt, gave me the confidence to. To almost feel like I can't accomplish anything, I just need to put the time. And even when I lose and I win, you know, I never blame my coach. I always understand like something I missed, something I did enough, something I needed more experience. And then he always comes with the right speech. I think I was a very lucky guy, you know, to have a very good instructor and then surround about surrounded with a lot of good people, for like a good example i had friends they became judge became good doctors became you know good lawyers i had people like i was older than me and i saw everything going on and learning from different sources so but i think he what's really happened with me i just having a good environment mm -hmm. that good environment kept me focused to to do what i have to do and then what i have to do is just put the time and then at some point things gonna come along you know Right, right. That's uh, that was really cool that you learned that at such a young age. Um, you know, and, and in several other interviews, I've heard you also talk about that you're such a strong believer in hard training. You know, it basically creates your style, your grit, your heart. Um, and, you know, those those hard training rounds with tough teammates is very important. You know, as they say, the uh, iron sharpens iron. Um, what do you what do you uh think this forging through the fire style of training does for an athlete in terms of becoming a champion and building your confidence and molding your character. This is not only for competitions, but you know, as an overall better person. Yeah, I, I, I believe you you have a chance to surround yourself with good partners with not just people like with good jiu-jitsu, but people with good character. You know what I mean? Sometimes you can have even some people in the room, they're not so tough. They're not so they're not big competitor, but like uh, you can he can give you a good role. He can he can tell you things maybe you don't do so well, but that specific spider guard, that specific half guard, he does so well and you can know you know you can absorb so much for him. I think like uh, those days where you can go home not feeling so strong because this guy just did it well against you. And those days where you feel like uh, you feel a little weak and someone come and say something and then and then you know motivate you a little bit and then to push you more i think like a, i think when you have a hard training when you have a room where you know the vibe is strong and, and towards you not only towards the competition but towards to 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 allow you to evolve as a person you know what i mean i think that's the, the type of environment you have to try to bring into the gym of course you're gonna have people who they're gonna drive that 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 you know that evolved to a competition. Some people are gonna become great instructors. Some gonna be some people are gonna become just a great partner training. But I think the type of vibe, you know, the instructor, the the, the professor have to bring into the mat is a vibe of confidence, a vibe of like a not, you know, not like a, not 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 putting people down. You know what I mean? Of mm -hmm. course, you wanna try, you know, helping. You wanna try, you know, pointing what's wrong, what's right. But at the same time, like a you know, pushing people up, be the balloon, all right? Because some people are already looking for you just because they, something happened. Maybe they, they're looking for some, that strength they see on you, you know what I mean? And then you have to know how to try to, to, to manage, to pass this for them. And sometimes it's going to be with words, sometimes it's going to be through training. I think, he, I think for me, 
you know, the hard training, the days I got here and I got home beat up, I got home tired and then come back next day. I think that thing I start realizing then every week doing the same thing, every month doing the same thing, like every, you know, every six months, every year doing the same thing. I think like that's built such a good confidence. Like you do see my body in a good shape and then slowly you see somebody make you a compliment and that compliment, like, of course you can feel good, but like, uh, you know, the company can go, it can go and can go here, can go there. Sometimes they say something about you, you don't hear, but like uh, just the feeling about doing something you wasn't doing before. Now you're doing like a, like a pass someone's guard was always very tough, but now because your, your, your endurance is better, your technique is better. Now we can pass some people coming to looking for you to help. Like uh, you start feeling like a small things in school, like uh, people start, you know, pointing to you to, hey, Shaolin, can you help me here? Hey, Shaolin, can you come here? Hey, Shaolin, like a, a bunch of like a positive stuff. And that's just, just starting to you know why I think I'm the right path. Let me continue to push because in some point when you realize it's so funny to see today after like a 20 something years, I was watching every first time in 99. And um, to see, sometimes I see interview from some, you know, old friends say, you know, back then when I was training and Shaolin is running the class, because I used to run a lot of competition class back then. Mm. You know, Tuesday and Thursdays used to be our time between 1.30 and 3 o'clock, 1.30 and 3 something. You know, used to be the time where I leave Gama Filho, my college, and then run to the school, you know, lunch in the bathroom to making sure I can, you know, you know, I have some time. And then by the time I'm driving to the school, going to my school, I'm already digesting the food, always pasta, always something I know I can digest fast. And then everybody's there. And then I always get there early. I always, and the thing is because I always was doing what I'm saying I'm gonna do, you know, in some point, some people, they feel like, whoa, you know, Shaolin is going too hard. Or oh, Shaolin is not allowing me doing the class today because I came late. Shaolin is this, but the discipline for me was a, such a strong tool all right, to lead for the goals because the way they always they always happen with you. Sometimes the motivation is not there. Sometimes you're just like, oh my gosh, I feel tired today to go. But your discipline is so strong, mm -hmm. you go anyway. And when you get there, you do a little stretch, and then you feel awesome. You know what I mean? And then and then I think that's the way I learned. You know, I learned having tough roles. I learned having to you know to do the physical condition. Like it doesn't matter sometimes. How if you, of course, you have to respect your limits. You don't want to go over things you when you, when you injury, when you do on something happen. But for me, discipline, discipline is a, such an important, you know, thing in my life. Overall, for my kids, I have three kids, two dogs and a cat, right? So if I don't have a discipline to make sure that things run smooth at home, to making sure I can still have time to myself and time to my kids, it becomes very tough. So that's the reason I think having a room of, a lot of champs. I think it helped me a lot to, to you know, just to make, it, um, to make myself a stronger person the time I have to be strong and funny when I can be funny and kind when I have to be kind. But I think like, uh, I think like uh, the vibe of the gym, you know, is really what's kind of gave me all that. I think without that vibe back then, I maybe won't, won't accomplish what I accomplished and then you know, because one of the biggest things in my mind today, I have a, such a peace of mind about my accomplishment. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not the type of guy looking behind and say, oh, man, I'm missing this, I'm missing that. Of course, I'd love to, to beat this guy and to beat that guy. But even the things I didn't have, in some point, God sent me another stuff. And then I feel, you know, very blessed to sometimes not having some things and end up having some other things and then make me even a happy guy today. So, you know, I think I can say today, I think the, the, team, the, the gym I choose, the coach I have, uh, the, the, the partner trainers I got, you know, I remember when BJ arrived there back in Brazil, you know, and then BJ arrived there, like I think he and so I think his friend was Steve, I don't know what the name of his friend, but just two guys arriving to, to go to the school and training. I remember like, a, you know, it's a, such a, strong vibe between American people coming here against Brazilian to compete. And then they're going to see what we're doing. Let's go train for him hard. And, and, and BJ was a, such an amazing training, such a, like a tough part. And then it's so nice to see how he earned, 
you know, such a big respect of all of us. You know what I mean? Incredible charisma, incredible charisma. He's an incredible, funny guy. Even without English, even without Portuguese, we tried to communicate and having fun with him. And then, so I think I think I was very lucky to having people in my life where they really, really a strong, very strong pieces. All right, to to help me to be my character. You know what I mean? In a, you know, in a in a way where the discipline is always the the most important thing. Yeah, that sounds that sounds amazing. It sounds like a really cool, uh, um, you know, environment you guys created. And I think what's important about the environment that was created was, uh, you know, the leadership that you guys had and and how you how you started at such a young age. And and you know, as as everyone knows, you're you're under Master Dede Pedineris, right? Yeah. And um, how much how much um, does it mean to you to honor where you came from and you know the person who showed you jujitsu? And for me, for me, John is everything. I think you have respect for your for your teacher, for your professors. That's kind of like a, if you don't have that, I think it's become I don't know, it become almost like a no sense. Everything you have, everything you do, you know what I mean? I think one of the most most important things for me when I see athletes you know, from young generation or maybe from old generation, like I see, you know, how high, how highly they talk about the instructor. Sometimes I notice like a, in different inter interviews and people don't, 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 don't mention, you know, instructor name or don't even, don't want to know, don't want to let people know where they come from because maybe coming a small gym, but you know what I mean? I'm so, I'm so blessed to be able to do interviews and then mention my coach's name mention my partner trainers because you know without them without like uh, having that room without having his words like uh, after 28 years you know what i mean you know hitting in my head you know almost every week about the choices i do with my life with my family you know there was no way to shaolin be able to do what i did it you know what i mean having the friends having the connections having the you know the the way to understand life you know, I was I was a 14 years old. I, I, I know nothing about life. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know, that they pretty much raising me on those mats because I spent so much time there. And then it was so nice to have a good example. You know what I mean? Because when you are a master, it's not the master for me is not the one teaches you one or two arm bar. Master for me is the one he he lead you with good examples. He leads you, you know what I mean? Not just you, but he lead like a you know, a big amount of people, all right? Sometimes just with like a one move, one word, one way to, to, to do something, you know what I mean? When you, nobody's seeing, nobody's watching him. That's the master, you know what I mean? And the master is not the one who thinks just for getting, you know, to, you know, to get like, a, you know, followers or to, or to show nice on, on YouTube or on Instagram. Like a master for me is the one like a, you know, do things when nobody's watching or nobody, you know, even care. He's the one going to spend time and going to talk to you, going to gonna, gonna bring in the word you need on that moment. And I think, Andre, I remember like a few times in my life, I got like a bad, bad losses. And I remember like Andre, the day coming to me and we, I think one time we in LeBlanc, skipper, after my fight against Leo Vieira and then I got a big a big loss. I think it was my first fight as a black belt. And I remember the day, like, uh, man, I was really upset, disappointing. And, and I was young. I was 18 years old. Didn't know how to deal with some some feelings yet. And then the day came with, like, uh, you know, the proper words. And then it's just like a, just like a, he, 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 you know, he brings some air to my chest again. And then I think for, of course, some people, they, 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 they remember the mess and the partner trainings for, you know, for the victories you got. I remember my coach for a lot of losses I got mm. because those days I remember, I think we had the best time together. You know what I mean? And I think that's what's like uh, making me so, so attached and so into him. You know what I mean? Like, uh, because after 28 years, he's still a guy I know I can call anytime and, and just say something, say something and feel like uh, I'm seeing him every day. And then it's so nice to watch now over there in Brazil what he's doing for some other people. You know what I mean? And then he, he doesn't need to do anything. He can be, let some other people do it, but it's nice how he takes the time. So I think, he, I hope, I hope, I hope, I really hope like uh, that's, 
young generation, those purple belts are going to become black one day, those browns are going to become black one day, those blacks are already black belts. I really hope they, they don't forget from you know, where they come from. I really hope they, they always can honor your coach, your partner trainers, because when you know more about your past, all right, you can kind of like a, you kind of can deal better and then understand more where you want to get, you know what I mean? Where do you want to, how far you want to go. When you, when you deny things on your life, when you're not, when you're not own things, when you're not embracing some things happen in your life, become a little tough to, to sometimes deal with certain things. And that's the reason I think yeah, I feel ashamed for, you know, for, you know, for people sometimes they rather have a black belt from an instructor more popular than a, a instructor he taught to him for the whole entire time. Mm. You know what I mean? So I think certain things I feel, I feel not, not cool at all. All right. I, I sometimes I don't know, understand so much what's going on inside between gyms, but, but I feel, I feel very blessed to, to having, the coach I have and, and then the chance to do interviews and, and mention all my gratitude, you know what I mean, for my instructor. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I completely agree with you. You know, I think that's what jiu-jitsu is all about. And um, when, another thing that I really liked and I've heard you speak on a few times was that you found um, jiu-jitsu or training martial arts as a way to express yourself, you know, um, I like that you saw jujitsu as more than just a fighting style, but uh, do you see jujitsu as an art form as well? Totally, totally. For me, I think we have a lot of different ways to express yourself in life. You know, some people go through music, some people go through books, some people go, you know, through dancing. I think jujitsu, you know, of course, you express yourself, you know, for a lot of one number amount of people, right, in the gym, in tournaments, but like. Uh, like I, I believe like it can be a such a, a such a, a such a fair way to, you know, to, you know, to help some other people, to help yourself, to, to evolve as a person. To, I believe like we can have a lot of other ways, a lot of other sports can have the same exactly too. But that, talking about jujitsu, I believe jujitsu helped me so much to show who is Shaolin, like who is that guy over here. You know, very serious sometimes. Not talk to people I don't know. Don't waving. Don't don't click my eyes for people I never I never I never waved before. But it's a big friend of my friends. It's a huge you know respect people. So I think I think like a, like a, the way the way I try to express myself in jujitsu is always try to be fair and try to be solid, to be a legit guy, to be a person where you know what I mean. I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I'm saying. What I'm gonna do. And then if I have a problem for you, I'm going to try to fix that problem, all right, to making sure we don't carry that, like, a, that, like a, that thing between us. But I think jiu-jitsu is there, you know, when I, when I have a problem, I try to fix. When I have, you know, when I'm, when I'm, when I, when I'm, when I'm training, I'm trying to, you know, showing on, on me, like, a how, how, how aggressive I move and how kind I move when I'm not catching somebody on something he's giving to me. You know what I mean? But it's just, it's just like a, it's a, it's a time where, where I can roll and not think about bills and not think about problems. I'm just thinking about pass your guard. I'm not just thinking about defending my side control. Uh, and then like I see, see beauty all on there. And then, you know, sometimes dream with that and then try to make better. Like when you have, a, you know, when you paint something and then you try to put in a certain way to making sure the people watching that paint can see what you see. Like when you train, you want to make sure like uh, you see something on you, but maybe somebody watching you maybe can see something can help in them, can inspire in them too. So I believe like uh, for people, for people like maybe using jujitsu, you know, in a, in a way to express themselves, I think it's great because definitely you can help some other people too, to understand and inspire people to, to do certain things. Right, right. Yeah, with that being said, uh, let's look at, uh, let's take a look at some of your artwork here then. I have a match from your 2001 semifinal in uh, the World Championship. Let's go ahead and throw it up on here. Let me try to get it loaded. All right, so here's your match versus Bruno Fernandez.
in the uh, middleweight division, 2001 World Championship. This is your uh, your middleweight, yeah, your middleweight yeah, debut. That, division, right? that time over there, I was a little tired to losing to losing weight for lighter weight, and then it was nice because my whole entire camp, I able to kind of train very hard and then train a lot, you know, and eating a lot. I remember before that 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 tournament, I, I went to McDonald's. You know what I mean? I went to McDonald's because I was, you know what I mean, so hungry. And then I still have some weight. I can, you know, feel him. And then I went to McDonald's and I feel awesome. Of course, something I now recommend, I now, I now advise, I now advise <laughs> yeah. to do it today. But, you know, that day works really well. You know, that's like I was a semifinal fight. Bruno has, you know, a very interesting game. You know, really tall guy, play really good guard. He was trying to surprise me with something. I think you notice he's doing a lot. Sometimes when he turned turtle, when mm -hmm. I try to work him to pass, I always like to pass very low, putting pressure, you know, sometimes on my knees, sometimes a little standing. But Bruno has a very good butterfly. And then so yes. the way he allowed me to run to his back, he's kind of prepared something to try reverse on me and surprise me. And then I think I was catching this. I was watching there. And at the same time, like Bruno likes to play somebody a fly too. Another game I feel very comfortable, you know, playing as well. So I, I believe every single game you play, you play, you should learn how to defend him. So so over there, I'm trying to feel, try to get the grips I need. And Bruno looks very calm too, very good mindset to compete. Mm -hmm. And I was I was solid there. I wasn't a good base, and you know, but he's a tall guy, and sometimes as a short guy like me, we always have to be you know, aware about sometimes the type of leverage he can create with those bridges and things like that, you know what I mean? Very flexible, the way I said. Look at how he's giving the back a little bit sometimes, but it's so hard. He's giving the back. He's using to recover. On on this point, he tries surprising me with, uh, with a little, I don't know, steamroller. I don't know exactly what he's trying to do, but definitely I don't feel comfortable. Normally, I like to take the back from there. But Bruno is always able to reverse on me and mm -hmm. then trying to almost end up on top. I think on this one, I think he escaped as well. I don't remember well. You know, um, I couldn't like have figured it out well to in this position how to read it because he always turned into the proper way. He's very calm. I, I didn't have no hints in his collar still. Yeah. What we're here, I want to go back to this part really quick and then I'll forward it again. There was something you did right here when you when you take the back. I've noticed you do it in several matches. You come around and you grab the waist. And I remember seeing this in the 2000 final versus Feitosa. He you come around and you grab his waist and he stands up. And you've done this. I saw you uh, you still do it today even. They yeah. stand up and you do a trip. You trip them back down and then you're able to take the back that way. Yeah, and, you know, um, I, like my goal is trying to hop to that side and stay heavy. But the way I said Bruno, I, I believe he does that game well. Every single time I try to turn this way, he turned turtle. So I could like a smash or stay heavy on him. Mm -hmm. and, and then he always turned he always turned turtle. Normally I'm okay when somebody turned turtle, but just Bruno give me a very tough time to find, figure it out on how to grab his collar there without losing my superior position, you know? Mm -hmm. Over there, I have one hook where Bruno's already escaping from the right side. So it's kind of like I, I know sooner or later I'm going to have to give it up about that hook and then try to stay on top one more time, you know? And, and then, But I was feeling good. I was feeling like a, I was a little bit ahead of the fight. You see, he escaped, ended up on the bottom again. In this division, I was feeling like uh, maybe not too strong like him, but I was a little fast. Mm -hmm. you're, you're definitely dictating the pace. That's yeah, for sure. that's the thing I try. Mm -hmm. And Bruno likes to do half guard. But again, you know, sometimes I end up in half guard as well. And I was calm there, you know, but I don't know exactly what happened. After this, Bruno tries to set up some grips. I don't know exactly which, which sweep he tries, but... I believe, I don't know if it's from there, I set up the choke. Yeah, so that's what I wanted to, to talk to you about was the choke. But you do a really awesome, uh, I believe, guard pass coming up. One thing I really liked is no matter what, he kept going to butterfly and you were just relentless with passing the butterfly. You would go Toriando, then you'd come in close, then you'd backstep. It was really cool to see you. Yeah, this was this was the, the butterfly 
uh, pass that you kept doing. Yes. I really like that. You see how he turned turtle a lot? Yes, yes. It's so hard to keep him down, you know what I mean? And normally I like to take the back from there, and then he turned again, and then he's going to turn towards to me at some point. Oh, look, the, I think he tried to grab my leg. Mm -hmm. Try sometimes even jump over me. Oh, and then he always recover. This is very much like a Gracie Baja style too. I yes, know like Holeta yes. like that a lot. Very similar. Yes, I agree. Um, I agree. But yeah. I think like uh, the game he chooses to play against me is a game, you know, I feel kind of comfortable too because the way I said, in, oh, back in the days in, in Nova Union, we have some guys like Leo Santos and a couple of the people there, sometimes even taller than him. You know, playing really well butterfly, playing really well spider, mm -hmm. and then at some point you feel just comfortable, like a, you know, see somebody playing the same game as your, your teammate play with you every day. You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now here. And I always try to go to the side of the hook, you know, to making sure his hook doesn't stay comfortable, and then and then and then and then comfortable to play, and then I go stand up, I go on my knees, but I always always try to switch inside and try to find a, a good pace. Mm -hmm. Because the idea is, I feel comfortable moving, you know, to find opportunity, you know what I mean? And then my hope is my partner maybe end up a little tired and then I take the back or I pass the guard or I do something I like to do, you know? Yeah, you uh, you definitely look like you had the gas tank too. You don't look tired at all. You could kind of see him fatiguing a little bit towards towards the end. And I think your, your pace was just, was just kind of uh, a little too much towards the end. But right here, I really, I really like. John, we don't have idea the difference. Like uh, sometimes we can have doing a camp, and just you know, and just you're able to drink the water you want, you're able to eat the food you want. You oh know, yeah. The next day, Imagine, yeah. that day over there, I think I was what 22 years old. That was my my last year as uh, you know my last year before moving to MMA. So 22 years old, able to eat whatever I want, you know, lifting you know really really well. So I definitely in that in that event I was feeling very very strong very very good mentally too. And you think because uh, I know you go on to beat Tedere in the final, which is also an amazing feat. But do you think that you were uh, this was your your best version of yourself than the years before the two championships you won before? I'm not gonna lie to you. This one I think the the competitors I got you know having Tedere in the in the, in the final and the Tedere in the final he did a completely different game on me. You know what I mean? Where he pull guard and then play half guard with me. So that's the choke I'm doing. Yes. That's the choke like I became became a bravo choke in the future. Back then it was a choke from half guard. You know, yeah. what I mean? but some people gave a name when we moved to United States. People gave a name for that choke. When I, I think when Lauzinho choking a, a Japanese guy in LA, he choked with that with a similar choke. Uh -huh. They gave a name. Bravo choke, but back then we already used it, not just me, but some other people too. Mm -hmm. You see, like uh, this choke normally happens from half guard when someone having that arm thinking he's he's okay. I'm already having his arm across, and then way I'm pulling his collar, I feed the other hand. When I feed, that's the time my left arm is start coming in. And one time the left arm is coming in, look the way he hugged me. Mm -hmm. if, if he if he moved this that, that hand out. Give him the side control, done deal. I'm gonna pass his guard, it'll be okay. But the way he put his hand there just gave him a better leverage for the choke. And then right there, I just fall to the side and, and that was it. Now, it was a was a very tight choke. One thing I, I was very uh it was was very interesting to me about this choke because the, the typical uh, Bravo choke, you, you kind of lean forward onto them and you keep their head down and you keep their shoulder down on the mat. But you had such a good grip where you were able to kind of fall to your back. I've never yeah. seen that before. I think something I learned a long time ago for the day, and then one thing he learned, I think I learned one of the first, second week, I never forgot. The most important thing is balance. That's, that's the word, correct? And then I realized when I have the choke, you know what I mean? If I now start moving my body in a certain way, I will have to let it go the grip to post because the way he uses his legs, he start putting me on balance a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I knew with that grip, I have to fall a little bit to the side to making sure I kill that so. hook and then allow that hook maybe elevate me and put me in a position where I'm going to have to post and then lose the grip. So that's the reason I start falling to the side. And I knew I can fall because the way I trap his arm with, with this arm here with my right arm, he couldn't pull his arm out. 
And I know if he tried to come up, he even gonna choke himself. But it was so deep, it was so deep because my forearm is completely across his neck, and I'm holding the collar pretty much behind his back. So in some point, the time is get you, 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 you know when you when you choke somebody, when you arm bar someone, you know like okay, that that one he gonna tap, mm-hmm. that one he gonna tap. Sometimes mm-hmm. you know as well, mm, it's too loose. I even don't wanna use because they're gonna lose my balance. But that choke was so tight. But I was trying to watch my balance, and that's the reason one of the reasons I fall to the opposite side to making sure my balance is stay correct the whole entire time. Mm-hmm. And then you even kind of sprawled back a little bit. That was cool. Because his hook tried to follow me. Yeah, that was that was a a really really cool way to to do that version of the choke. I think I think I might have to see a little tutorial video of that later later on. We could uh, show the people and post for sure, it for sure. Yeah, that joke became very popular. All right, in some point, I think it when when people start doing with gi, no gi. And then I think for me, it's always to think the respect for my opponent is always very important. It's no, mm-hmm. I think we have to really, people have to understand how much is important having two people going to the mat like that, doing the best. And then we never know who's going to win, you know what I mean? But for me, like without him, we're not going to have chance to, I'm not going to have chance to do the things I did it without me. He's not going to be able to evolve as a fighter the way he did, I believe. So that's the reason I think he more respect, you know, mm-hmm. between people, all right, on the, on the crowd, more respect between fighters, you know what I mean, during the mat and outside the mat. Because I don't know, man, but some, some, some lessons is a, such a common sense, I think, he, back in the days to learn, all right? Like, because back in the days, we're not going to talk bad about somebody because... Why are you talking bad about someone? You even don't know the guy. The guy never did nothing for you. But people today start talking bad. You know, that they, they that entitlement, okay, I can talk bad about any person I want because this guy is public, this guy does this, this guy is that. So this is something like a I must push me away when I see things online. I must push me away to to comment or to to make a post. Sometimes I know somebody, you know what I mean? And I rather text the guy then put a, a comment on his Instagram or, or something because I saw I saw his wall with so much on his wall and mm-hmm. even like I, something I don't I don't agree so much but I think the respect between fighters have to be have to remain very very strong because without respect very hard to society very hard to you know to the human human being evolve I think respect is such a old thing. And it's not because we're in 2021, you know what I mean? We can, we have to forget things to your grandpa or your coach or your dad, you know what I mean, taught to you a long time ago. I think he, I believe some young people see some bad examples out there. So oh, if, I, if I curse this guy, if I say this, if I say that, I can get a fight, I can get this. But we can see so many good examples too about people, they don't talk nothing. You know what I mean? But they just deliver, you know, they just deliver on the mat, they deliver on the ring. And I, I'm still I'm still a big fan of those guys. I'm still a big fan of the people. You know what I mean? It's really, you know, like a, like a trying to always pray a good respect for the coach, for his partner trainings, for the other people watching them. Can be a kid, can be a, a, a woman, can be a guy, it doesn't matter. But the way he talks, I think like it's very, very important to to show who he really is, you know. Right, right. I think uh, with that life lesson right there, we should, uh, you know, conclude our interview. That was a really good way to, to sum things up. Well, Professor, I want to thank you so much for your time. Thank you, bro. thank you, man. Thank you. Anything you need, man. All right. I hope people understand, like, my point of view about, you know, how some things I think should be. Of course, 2021, you know, year, you know, different generation, but. It's not everything from the past is wrong. A lot of things from the past is still is still so right, so right, because that's the way we, we can continue moving forward. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Great, great words. All right. Thank you so much, Professor. Thank uh, it's you, been bro. a pleasure. All right. My pleasure, man. Take care. Awesome.